And here we are again at Joshua chapter 3, verse 11. Behold, the ark of the covenant of the Lord of all the earth passes over before you into Jordan. Notes. Now Christ of which the Ark of the Covenant was a type, has gone before us and secured the victory. Faith and trust in Him guarantees us His victory. And to be sure, it is a victory which He has won solely for us. Verse 12. Now therefore take you twelve men out of the tribes of Israel, out of every tribe a man. Notes. Now the number twelve is God's number of government. However, it is his government and not that of man. Now, this means that man must not dilute it in any way, add or subtract or anything. Verse 13. And it shall come to pass as soon as the soles of the feet of the priests who bear the ark of the Lord, the Lord of all the earth, shall rest in the waters of Jordan, that the waters of Jordan shall be cut off from the waters that come down from above, and they shall stand upon an heap. Notes. Now the priest being a type of Christ as well, the moment their feet touched the waters, well, the water fled. Such is the power of Christ over the enemies of our soul. But understand, Jordan will flee only before Christ and not at all before us. Verse 14. And it came to pass when the people removed from their tents to pass over Jordan, and the priest bearing the Ark of the Covenant before the people, and as they and as the, <clears throat> verse 15 I'll clear my throat and as they who bore the ark were come unto Jordan and the feet of the priests who bore the ark were dipped in the brim of the water for Jordan was overflowed uh, all his banks all the time of harvest that the waters which came down from above stood and rose up upon an heap very far from the city of Adam that is beside Zaratan and those that came down toward the sea of the plain, even the salt sea, failed and were cut off. And the people passed over right against Jericho. Notes. In other, in other words, it flooded every spring. Now, normally the Jordan River is about 30 to 40 feet wide. It is said, however, when it flooded uh, during those times, which it did just about every spring, that its depth would increase to about 40, uh, 40 feet and its width to nearly two miles. Now, no doubt Jericho felt somewhat safe, thinking that Israel could not cross the swollen river. Well, they reckoned without the power of God involved in all of this. Now, this can be construed as nothing more than one of the greatest miracles ever performed by God. Uh, furthermore, the Lord had them to cross opposite Jericho with the inhabitants of that city, no doubt observing this little spectacle. Uh, verse 17, And the priest who bore the ark of the covenant of the Lord stood firm on dry ground in the midst of Jordan. And all the Israelites passed over onto dry ground until all the people were passed clean over Jordan. Notes. Now, many people think of Jordan as described here as a type of death with Canaan as a type of heaven. However, while Jordan is actually a type of death, it is rather a type of the death of the flesh, with Canaan a type of our possession of the promises of God by the power of the Holy Spirit. Now we're on chapter 4. And it came to pass, when all the people were clean passed over Jordan, that the Lord spoke unto Joshua, saying, Take you twelve men out of the people, out of every tribe a man, and command you them, saying, Take you hence out of the midst of Jordan, out of the place where the priest's feet stood firm, twelve stones, and you shall carry them over with you, and leave them in the lodging place where you shall lodge this night. Notes. That's my cat, Louise, playing with a little plastic bag. Never mind. But we will find in this chapter that there are two distinct memorials actually set up, and both of them consist of twelve stones. Verse 4. Then Joshua called the twelve men whom he had prepared of the children of Israel out of every tribe a man. And Joshua said unto them, Pass over before the ark of the Lord your God into the very midst of Jordan, and take you up every man of you a stone upon his shoulder, according unto the number of the tribes of the children of Israel. Verse 6 that this may be a sign among you that when your children ask their fathers in time to come, saying, What mean you by these stones? 
when you shall answer them that the waters of Jordan were cut off before the ark of the covenant of the Lord when it passed over Jordan the waters of Jordan were cut off and these stones shall be for a memorial unto the children of Israel forever notes now four facts are stated about these stones they were taken they were carried they were laid down and they were set up now the origin of the stones was the deep bed of Jordan their purpose was to testify that Israel owed her entrance into the goodly land only and wholly to divine grace and power in other words God now in the baptism of Christ the believer dies to his old life and rises into a into a new life of sorts and we are reminded that as to our moral origin we were buried beneath the waters of the wrath of God that as our present position we are now set up upon resurrection ground and it is our duty to testify daily to the glory of Christ the one and only Savior now the Lord Jesus Christ said to the Pharisees that if the children were silent the very stones would cry out well these stones set up at Gilgal cried out day and night verse 8 and the children of Israel did so as Joshua commanded and took up twelve stones out of the midst of Jordan as the Lord spoke unto Joshua according to the number of the tribes of the children of Israel and carried them over with them unto the place where they lodged and laid them down there and Joshua set up twelve stones in the midst of Jordan in the place where the feet of the priest which bore the ark of the covenant stood and they are there until this day notes now the first memorial could no doubt be referred to as Jordan stones but these spoke of in the ninth verse must be referred to as wilderness stones now these twelve stones buried at the buried on the bottom of the Jordan River where the feet of the priest had stood signify the death and burial of Israel's forty years of unbelief and sinning in the wilderness the Lord is saying to Israel that that the time is over buried out of sight and forgotten typical of all of our sins in the past that is if we properly trust Christ First John chapter uh, 1 verse 9 well unfortunately far too many modern Christians seem to take delight in diving down to the bottom of the Jordan spiritually speaking and thereby retrieving those stones and bringing them back to the surface thereby constantly reminding people of such and such and such sin I would hope we could see the terrible insult to Christ that such a thing is and in fact that such action is sinful and very wicked sins forgiven are to never be held over someone's head they're buried, they're gone, they're dead bye bye verse 10 for the priests which bore the ark stood in the midst of the Jordan until everything was finished that the Lord commanded Joshua to speak unto the, t unto the people according to all that Moses commanded Joshua and the people hastened or they hasted and passed over notes now what a scene this must have really have been the majestic ark of the covenant held on the shoulders of the priest all in the midst of the Jordan with the waters held up by the mighty power of God that the people could walk across on dry ground flood or not it doesn't make any difference verse 11 and it came to pass when all the people were clean passed over that the ark of the Lord passed over and the priest in the presence of the people and the children of Reuben and the children of Gad and the half tribe of Manasseh passed over on before the children of Israel as Moses spoke unto them verse 13 about 40,000 prepared for war passed over before the Lord unto battle to the plains of Jericho on that day the Lord magnified Joshua in the sight of all Israel and they feared him as they feared Moses all the days of his life notes now Joshua was a very interesting typology of Christ who actually carried the name uh, Joshua which means Savior and the Greek derivative is actually Jesus now we must pick up in Joshua chapter 4 verse 15 thank you and God bless